What's up everyone? My name is Ali. Welcome back to my world of stocks and welcome back to our stocks my viewers want me to review series, one of my favorite series on the channel, where in each episode I pick a comment straight from you guys where you're asking about a certain stock and so I give you my quick review of it and I let you know if I would consider buying that stock myself. It's a ton of fun and by the way if you want to see past episodes I'll link the playlist for you down in the description and on a pinned comment. But in today's episode we have a very interesting speculative growth stock that has been beaten down heavily recently and so I've actually been getting quite interested in this stock myself. But this comment comes from Alex Gorski who says, hey Ale, uh, thanks for the insight over the years. I've been watching since 2020. What a ride it's been. Wondering what your current opinion is on these three stocks, Disney, Pfizer, and Hims. I look forward to your content as always. Thanks. Well, you are very welcome, my friend, and thank you for the nice comment. It's definitely been a crazy ride over the years, so I appreciate your viewership and support. As far as the stocks you asked about, though, uh, Disney and Pfizer, I definitely talk about those a lot on the channel, and you guys probably know that I am fairly bullish on both of those stocks, and I own them myself. However, the third stock, Hims, is a stock that I have never talked about on the channel before, so that's going to be the focus of today's video. So let's talk about this telehealth specialist who has expertise in areas of hair loss, ED, mental health, and many other things. It's quite interesting. So we're going to take a look at the business and what they do what they plan to do in the future for even more growth and diversification, what the stock looks like today and where I think it's heading in the future. And of course, I'll let you know if I plan to buy any shares myself and you might want to stick around for the end of this video. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. All right, now a quick little intro into the company. They were originally founded back in 2017 as purely the Hims Company by Andrew Dudham, who is still the CEO to this day, and they focus mostly on selling ED pills and hair loss treatments for men, which are still one of the biggest parts of their business to this day. And their main selling point was that rather than having to make an appointment with a doctor, sit in a waiting room, see the doctor in person, and then go to the pharmacy to pick up your prescription, you could simply just go to the HIMS website or the mobile app and talk to a doctor virtually through their telehealth platform, get a prescription right away, sign up for any kind of subscription or, or you know any kind of plan you want and you can instantly place orders for things like Viagra, Cialis and several other brands. They even have ED Mints too which uh, they just recently launched by the way. However since the founding of the company they've expanded in a big way into other markets too like uh, you know of course deeper into hair loss but also EC, um, skincare, supplements, they have the telehealth platform for anxiety, depression, and online therapy, and they even have a primary care business that runs on the platform too, which is used to treat over 30 conditions, including areas of cold and flu, allergies, infections, skin, fungal, headaches, uh, acid reflux, stomach conditions, and just all kinds of regular treatments that you would typically see a doctor for. Except here you have 24 hour convenience with upfront pricing that is pretty affordable like $39 for seeing a physician or about the same amount for a monthly subscription plan to their best selling hair loss spray. So whatever the issue is, most people can probably afford at least some type of treatment. And to expand even further, they also launched the HERS website to sell things like birth control to women, including hair, skincare, supplements, other sex related products, and they even have a telehealth platform there too, where they partnered with actress Kristen Bell for mental health awareness. As a result, the company changed its name from just being Hims to now Hims and Hers Health, with a public stock debuting in 2020 under the ticker HIMS. Now, since going public, the stock has been a very wild ride, initially soaring to a high of $25 a share before crashing all the way down to just about $2 
then rising again up to $12 only to fall once more to where they sit today at just around $7 a share. And so depending on how you look at all of this volatility, you could say that from the all time high, the stock has crashed by over 70%. And even from the lower $12 mark, it has still crashed by over 40%. So regardless, the stock has obviously fallen by a giant amount. And by the way, just so you're aware, the company also reported earnings this past week, and despite it actually being a great report in my opinion, which I'll show you in just a second, the stock actually fell considerably after an initial rise, and it's down now like 10% just this week alone. Anyway, the question now is, is the stock a buy after all of this crashing? Because keep in mind, their price to sales ratio has also fallen now to less than two, which is over 50% cheaper than the sector. This is why so many people are now interested in the stock and have actually received several comments asking about it too. So let's try to answer that question. Well, First of all, when looking at their financials, we can see that they've actually had a ton of success over the years. Yes, they continue to lose millions on the bottom line, but their sales have skyrocketed during that time, even going as far as to nearly double in each of the past three years, which is very impressive. The biggest issue I see right away though, is that their growth is now falling to just about 60% expected this year, and then 20% the year after. Now, on one hand, that does alarm me a bit, because one fear I have about this company is that they don't have much of a barrier to entry. I mean, there's tons of telehealth and mental health and, I don't know, sexual health, all kinds of different health companies popping up all the time, especially since the pandemic. In fact, there's now close to 1,400 different telehealth businesses just in the US alone, which has been growing by about 30% on average over the past five years. Guys, that's a gigantic increase in terms of new businesses for you know just that market alone. And so I wonder if that might be putting some pressure on HIMS and limiting their growth potential. However, on the other side, I think HIMS might have a pretty strong competitive moat thanks to their combination of a strong brand, a robust technology platform, a solid team with clinical experience and partnerships, and a strong portfolio of products and new markets that they can tap into in the future. And I'll expand a little further on all of this. When you look at their recurring revenue from subscriptions, it's at over 90%, meaning that their customers tend to stick around. In fact, the biggest reason why Hims isn't Gap profitable yet is because most of their profits go towards advertising spend in order to attract new customers. And while that's a little scary in that it makes it look like Hims might just be kind of buying their own growth, the fact of the matter is that these customers become much more valuable over time, so you need to focus on acquiring as many of them as you can right now so that the subscription revenues can snowball over time because of those strong retention rates, which is uh, a strategy that seems to be working as their subscribers have been growing by thousands every single quarter with another 74% increase year over year in this latest one. In fact, they've now tripled their subscriber count in less than two years to over 1.2 million. That's very promising to see because again, those subscribers are likely to stick around and keep paying them money. And speaking of the most recent quarter, by the way, they absolutely destroyed numbers, beating EPS by over 70% and posting really high revenue growth of over 80%. So I have no idea why the stock fell post earnings. It kind of seems like there might have been a short attack or some kind of market manipulation because even their profitability is getting much better. In fact, they already reached positive adjusted EBITDA a couple quarters ago and continue to improve its margin, which by the way, their gross margin is also very high at over 75%. So if they can continue to add more subscribers and grow their recurring revenues while simultaneously improving their profitability, then this could actually turn into some very high growth on the bottom line too, especially when their advertising spend plateaus, but the rest of the business keeps growing. And already you're seeing some of that as analysts project that their EPS will rise by over 60% a year through the next five years, according to Yahoo Finance. And speaking of analysts, the stock price currently trades well below even the lowest analyst price target too, which suggests it may be grossly undervalued right now. 
Time will tell, but I actually think that they have a pretty good future ahead of them. Not only have they already managed to convince retailers to sell their products like Target, Walgreens, and more, but there's also some really big markets that they haven't even tapped into yet but are actively preparing to do so. In men's health, for example, They've yet to treat testosterone and prostate issues, which are super common among men. In women's health, there's menopause and digestion. In dermatology, there's eczema and rosacea. In mental health, there's insomnia, PTSD, and substance abuse. And there's even broader areas of weight management, pain management, fertility, and diabetes. Guys, these are markets with hundreds of millions of potential customers for them when they only have like 1 million right now. And by the way, I see advertisements all the time for all these different issues and conditions. So I don't see any reason why Hims couldn't do a great job of marketing into these new areas too, or even cross sell some of these treatments to already existing customers. Overall, I just see a lot of potential here, especially if they're able to expand into new geographies and really tap into the, you know, those hundreds of millions of different customers, uh, you know, potentially world worldwide. And yet the stock has been beaten down into the ground all the meanwhile. And while there is risk and it remains a highly speculative stock because of the lack lack of gap profitability, I just think that'll come slowly over time and meanwhile, they also have a pretty damn good balance sheet with virtually no debt and some very high current and total ratios that can help them survive long enough to get there even if they go through any short term pains right now. And so I think I've seen enough guys. This is the first stock in the series that I've actually decided to buy a little bit of myself. I did put this order in after the market closed, so it's still pending, but I'm picking up a few shares here at around $7 each. And it's a very tiny amount to start because I realize the risk here and I need to be able to easily add more to my position and lower my cost basis if it continues to fall. And this is by all accounts a downtrending stock. We have to be realistic about that. A lot of people would call this a falling knife. And so they would say that I am catching a falling knife here, which I like to do that sometimes. You know, sometimes it works out for me and sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see how this one plays out. But, you know, overall, I think I've seen enough to warrant a small pickup on this one high risk, but potentially also high reward. And I actually think the ceiling is quite high for their future potential. I'm a little worried about competition, I'm a little worried about their barrier to entry, but overall, I think it's pretty decent here and it's worth taking a shot on. So uh, that's how I feel about it. What do you all think? Let me know down in the comment section. Did I make the right call here? Am I making a mistake? please let me know. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. And if you want me to review any other stock in the future for this series, then let me know what stock it is. Give me a detailed explanation why, please. Uh, let me know why you want a review of it and what your own personal opinion is on that stock. And I may choose it for a future video. But thanks again for stopping by, my friends. I appreciate all of your support. I hope you're all doing well out there. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.